so maybe it's goat for last. Uh, I know he probably won't like me saying that, but that's okay. Uh, coach uh, Greg Marshall is the the current head coach and and former player of the Western Mustangs, and he has one of the most uh, illustrious coaching careers in Canadian football. A former CFL player, he was the first coach to make the jump directly from Canadian University football to CFL head coach. He immediately made an impact and was recognized as CFL Coach of the Year. He made his return to the Western Mustangs as their head coach and has sustained excellence over his tenure uh, during his time at Western. Uh, these, these stats are crazy, but he has also claimed a uh, victory in the 2017 Vanier Cup. He has uh, had led his team to 10 Yates Cups and claimed victory six times. Um, you know, along with his coaching career in total, he has claimed tw 20 total Yates Cup titles as a player and a coach to go along with his Vanier Cup. Six-time OUA Coach of the Year winner and 2018 U Sports Coach of the Year. Uh, Greg Marshall, the floor is yours. Hey, thanks, Aaron. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the video up? Yeah, looks good. Yeah, okay. Go. Just trying to get my uh, technical stuff done here. Okay, good. Yeah, again, thanks, Aaron, and I uh, appreciate uh, everyone coming on and uh, um, talking football at the end of May. Um, we hope that things get better and we're going to be back playing some, you know, live football in the, in the next little while. Um, for some of you that were on the, uh, the uh, Ontario High School football clinic, the virtual clinics that they have, I did a presentation on our run game. Um, today I'm going to do our play action pass. Let's make sure. You see the, the video okay now? Yeah, it brought up play action, so. Okay, good. Okay, so. Um, guys, here's just a, just a, uh, our stats in the last 10 years. I guess I haven't probably updated them, but um, as you can see, uh, you know, we run the football. And, you know, we don't just run the football. I think we run the football, you know, effectively, efficiently. Um, a lot of our offense is built around the run game. And, you know, I went over that in, in, in other presentations that I did. But you know what? <clears throat> we graduate quarterbacks. You have to um, have an offense that's not just good in September when the weather's good but an offense that's good in November when it's difficult to throw the football because of the wind or the, the condition of the football, um, injuries to your, your quarterback, all those things can, can significantly impact the effectiveness of your offense, okay, if you're just, if you're pass heavy. So we've, we've you know, relied on the run game. Now, having said that, we throw the football. I mean, you know, if you look at the OUA stats, I mean, Chris Merchant was a Heck Crichton winner uh, in the last year in 2019. Uh, Michael Follins was a great passer for us. We've had some great quarterbacks and we do throw the football, but our offense is built around the run game and built around play action pass. And I would say probably that 70% of our pass plays come off some type of run action look. Um, so in our offense, we take our best run plays, the ones that the defense have to stop, have to prepare uh, and build our play action passes around those run actions. In order for it to be successful, it's got to simulate uh, the actual play, the actual run play. So the backfield action must be the same as the run play. Now we will, you know, Joe kind of alluded to this, that we will run the same run play, um, but have different motions, um, different formations, but we keep it, try to keep it pretty, you know, similar for the offensive line. So whether we're running a zone play or a split zone play or, you know, our gap counter scheme or our power play, um, we, have, we have 
base plays, but then we have so many different uh, variations based on um, backfield action, um, motion, formation. So we wanna make sure that our play action pass game uh, replicates what we're doing on the run game. You know, it really starts with, you know, a, a, um, good backfield action, but the most important thing, you know, is, is aggressive offensive line play. And, you know, too often times, um, at least when I was a young coach, we would run all these different play actions and I was trying to get our offensive line to, you know, be aggressive. But, but at the end of the day, um, the linebackers were taking their cues from the offensive line and they were standing up and pass blocking. And we have great, great backfield action. But if you want to uh, really replicate um, play act, good play action, you, you, you have to have uh, your offensive line being aggressive. And I kind of look back to how, how we changed. It, it probably started back, you know, Mike Folds graduated in 2009 and my son Donnie came in to play quarterback. And the difference was Donnie was five foot nine and, you know, couldn't see over the line. We went to a, a way more aggressive blocking technique on our offensive line to be able to, you know, afford Donnie the ability to, to see over the line of scrimmage. So it, it, it kind of started there and it, it just ev evolved from there. We always say if, if you want to really mimic run action, then you need to pull, you pull some of your linemen. If you pull center and tackle or if you pull the guards on run plays like you run power or you run counters, then if you want to uh, accurately mimic those run actions, then you have to be able to do that in um, your play action pass. And we use it a lot to neutralize a disruptive defensive line with a run look and, and, and to slow them down. You look at some of the defensive ends that we played against in our conference. I mean, you know, Kwaku Botang who at Laurier was was difficult to block. Uh, Matthew Betts from from Laval, who we played in in seventeen and eighteen, um, was difficult to block one on one with our offensive tackle. But by having a run look coming at him and then blocking him with a fullback or a slot back, or but he didn't know, or a pulling guard. Um, it froze him for in, in so he couldn't use his quick get off and get upfield and rush the passer. We always say if, if you're going to try to run play action on second and long, you better be prepared to run the ball on second and long. So, you know, we don't see a ton of two man because we aren't afraid to, to run the football on second and long and um, get another guy out of the box, they're in man coverage. We can, we can attack defenses um, that try to play, you know, some type of two-man coverage against us or four-deep coverage uh, by running the football on second and long. <clears throat> uh, vary the protection. So uh, aggressive play actions can be dangerous. Um, certain in, in specific situations, you know, um, there's times in the game when we expect that there's going to be blitz and it could be a run blitz or a pass blitz that, that the defense is trying to fill the gaps by, by using some type of run blitz on us. Um, our zone schemes tend to be a little safer um, than our, our gap schemes. But having said that, I would say that we're probably split. Our offense is probably split pretty evenly between gap scheme blocking where we're running powers and we're running traps and we're running counters or, you know, we're running inside, outside or split zone type plays. Okay. So our play action game mimics, you know, the, the tendencies in our run game. So depending on where we're trying to throw the football and what we're trying to accomplish, we will vary the length of the fake. Okay, we typically have three types of fakes. A, a long ride where the running back needs to hold the position. We want to make sure that the running back doesn't leave early, that he waits till the quarterback has the balls in his hand, all right, uh, before he begins the mesh and begins to approach the quarterback. 
a short, quick fade where we're, we're trying to get the ball out quickly. And then ones where we have no fake at all. It looks like run. The offensive line is blocking run. The running backs are taking a run pass, but the quarterback doesn't extend the ball. He's looking to throw the ball quickly, and we're looking to hold the linebackers in the box and not expand out in some type of quick, uh, quick pass game. <clears throat> in our, our play action, we're going to vary the quarterback launch point. Okay, so make sure that you know we'll run you know bootleg actions, we'll run drop back actions out of play action. We'll try to get the quarterback sometimes outside, especially against teams that might try to pinch, pinch versus a versus a pulling guard on a counter or squeeze the fullback that will you know try to get the the quarterback outside of the box and get him outside where he's got better vision. But we'll use different uh, launch points um, to make sure that uh, uh, we afford the quarterback. We just don't want the defense to be able to pin their ears back and know where the launch point is going to be. So vary the launch point. We do that in, in our pass game. We certainly do that in our uh, play action pass game. There's times when we, we need to uh, abort the fake and get the ball away quick. So if, if our quarterback sees zero blitz and we can't get out of the play, then he'll abort the, the fake and go to his, his you know, quick read. Um, our running backs who, who are going through a fake also have um, a defender that they're responsible for or an area that they're responsible for. But specifically when they have a, a specific defender, um, then we will FTF, you know, forget the fake and move into a position to pick up the defender. So abort the fake, get to the position to execute the technique on the defender that's blitzing. So um, we do run RPOs. We run RPOs where we make a decision, uh, run pass, um, before the snap of the football. So we'll, 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 we'll see the box. We'll either kill the, kill the run play and throw it, or we'll flip the run play to the other side. So it, our usually, when we make a pre-snap decision on, on, on run or pass, it is usually based on, you know, on, on the defense's pre-snap alignment. Um, we do run RPOs, um, but a lot of our RPOs actually sometimes our play action passes that we we take that run option out and make the, the the read easier for the quarterback okay so we're still going through a hard run fake our offensive line is blocking the run just like they would uh, on on a specific run play but um, there is no run option okay so we do both RPO and action passes I just find that sometimes we, we'll, we'll take an RPO, we'll make it a play action pass, just allows the quarterback more time to go through his read progression, progression, especially if that first read isn't there. Okay. So, as I said, we're, we're, we're trying to slow down a dominant defensive end by leaving him unblocked and moving across and pulling a guard to block him or having our fullback on that split zone look, slice across the backfield and block the defensive end. To freeze him um, from coming upfield. He comes upfield, we're gonna run the football and run the ball run the ball back underneath him. So, you know, it's gonna slow that, that dominant defensive end up by running play action and attacking him with different blockers, moving, running a slot back across the formation like we would on a run play, having our foot fullback slice across, Pulling our center of guard to, to block him helps to neutralize uh, and slow the, the pass rush of a defensive end. Also, the, the main area we're trying to attack is the linebackers. Uh, they, they're the ones that have run responsibility and pass coverage responsibility. And so what we want to do with our play action is get them to step up and play the run. If our offensive line is taught to engage them just as they would on a run. And <clears throat> we very rarely get called for linemen downfield. Um, it's a little different in the, in, in the U.S. In the, in, the, uh, in the American game. They, they're pretty, they're good at calling uh, 
um, linemen downfield. Initially, what we would say, as soon as we see the ball in the air, for our offensive line to backpedal and get back towards the line of scrimmage. So, um, and then, you know, attacking some aggressive safety, you know, who, who's coming up and reading run and wants to run Phil and taking that shot over the top. So we're trying to throw the, our, our main play action, most of our play action is we're trying to throw the ball and take some type of level two shot. And we're going to try to throw it behind the linebackers, push the, push the, the deep coverage guys deep. And then instead of, instead of then try to run someone back in behind in level two. Um, then we put defenders in man coverage uh, on the blocking backs into a bind. So if you're covering the back man to man, and he's coming out to block you and you get ready to take him on and then he releases into a route. Um, we want to influence the defense in one direction and attack in the opposite direction. Example, bootleg. So try to draw the defense away from an area, okay? And then attack by, by moving in a, a different, you know, different direction. So a couple of things. Sometimes we're trying to open up that level too. Sometimes we're trying to influence the defense one way and then run our play action to the opposite side. An example would be that bootleg play. And then we'll run uh, fake run action, move the pocket, and have the option to screen the, the, the ball back to the faking running back. So we'll run screens. Traditionally, um, Screens off of play action work well if you're moving you're moving the defense one way and then you know kind of almost like a bootleg action and then coming back to it. It's it's screens work best when the defense drops quickly and gets out of there. So the linebackers see okay it's second and long and they're they're not even worrying about the run read. They're just you run look. They're just dropping out into pass and trying to get underneath that that coverage. And those deep dropping linebackers create a, that area in level one to be able to screen it to the running back. We use screens off play action by moving those linebackers one way and then screening it back. But most of them have an option. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to leak our fullback out one way. And if he's open, we're going to take it. If not, all right, we're screening the ball back to the, 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 the running back, okay, who was coming off of his play action fake. Okay. Okay. The, the, the play I have on here right now, I got to make sure that my my video is with uh, is in alignment here. But Badger is a is a play that uh, it's it's a gap play. It's a simple play. It's you know your fullback. Um, you're running power. He's the lead block at the point of attack, whether that's, you know, strong to the field or weak into the boundary. Your fullback is going to block the end man on the line of scrimmage, and you're going to pull the guard, okay, to pick, you know, in, in, in a power play um, to pick up that overhang linebacker, whether it's the Sam linebacker if you're running it strong or the Will linebacker if you're running it weak. So our protection on Badger, which is basically fullback releases out into the flat. Okay, will linebacker if he's if he's going weak, he thinks it's a run play, is getting ready to step up and take on the run, and our fullback is is weak, and then he's our first read. So our our protection is gap protection. So if we're going to pull the backside guard, uh, everyone has backside gap responsibility. Okay. Uh, the faking fullback uh, fakes his block on the defensive end and then releases to the flat. The backside guard pulls and blocks the defensive end or the end man on the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> the backside tackle uh, needs to, to attack the B gap because the center's working backside gap. We're pulling the backside guard and the center's going to work, uh, sorry, the backside tackle is going to squeeze the B and then sling back to the C gap. Okay, the running back has a fake, and if we're running this play weak, he's going to be responsible for the SAM. If the SAM is on a, some type of SAM blitz, then he's going to uh, forget the fake and uh, attack the SAM and pick up the SAM right away.
One of the things you'll see on our, our videos, and I went over this on our, the other presentation, is that we motion our fullback all the time. We, we might start them, you know, strong and motion them weak. We might start them strong, motion them weak, and motion them back strong. But he is motioning all the time. And the one thing we want to see is how the defense is um, adjusting to our fullback. Everyone adjusts to our fullback in some way. And so um, is it consistent? Do they track it with the same linebacker? Um, do they track it with another linebacker? Do they bump it across or do they roll down with the secondary? So in some way they're going to motion um, and, and move and adjust to our fullback. So we're going to motion our, our, our fullback, see if that Sam is tracking. If the Sam tracks, now we know our responsibility of the running back is different because he's going to come across with the fullback. It's most likely that the, <clears throat> the uh, running back is going to be responsible for the Mac. This is just this is just power week with a crack block block from our X receiver. Okay. Here's one example of a Badger play that we use. We just call the Badger switch, our switch concept. Our W, if we're running this uh, power look weak, our, our number two inside receiver, receiver, our W in this situation is going to push through the outside shoulder uh, of the number two defender. And then we're going to run some type of slant uh, by the X receiver underneath. Um, sometimes when they're both off and then they're in man, we might get, a, you know, a pick there, but we're not intentionally trying to make a pick on that play, okay? If it's not there, our first read is a fullback, second read is to the switch, the third read would be coming back to the Z receiver on the backside. So in this play, we're trying, to, we know that the will is, is most likely going to run and get outside with the fullback. Um, we're then trying to uh, occupy the Mac with the play action. And so hard play action, pull the guard, get the Mac to come up. In that case, the Mac flowed, but get in that hole, um, where those linebackers would normally drop. Same play. Uh, into the boundary. Now we got a pretty quick throw there because we had a blitz situation. You can see that our running back had to abort the fake and, and get to pick up the, the edge rusher. Okay, similar type play, different formation.
This was just this was just something we had seen on film beforehand, and we had we had completed this this uh, pass play to our fullback uh, earlier. So this time they covered it, and then we just take our running back, our X down, who we, we like to bring down in a blocking situation, and now he comes down like he's going to crack on that will linebacker and then turn back out and run to the corner of the field. Comes in motion as if he was going to crack. Similar play, all right, but we're running underneath to hold those linebackers and trying to throw the ball to our Y receiver, our field inside receiver, into that hole. Fullbacks covered because that's our first look. And then throwing the ball back level two to our inside receiver. That's the look that right there. Okay. We might get a pick if it's man, our X is coming down. And if the will linebacker has our fullback man to man, then we're going to get a natural pick there. Okay. And our fullback is going to be, you know, our first read and is going to be open. So I talked about the screen play off of it. So we are, we are going to check the fullback to see if he's open here and get the ball to him. And if not, we're screening the ball back to the tailback. So they're, they're, our offense line is blocking screen. So our quarterback knows that, you know, he doesn't have a lot of time. We're not throwing any other routes. Fullback, if he's open. Fullback's covered, turn and screen the ball back to the tailback. Okay, this next one's a little different. It's kind of out of sequence, sorry guys, but it's it's a similar concept. Uh, we're, we're fake and run, you can't see it because the film's not very good, but we're faking our split zone play and it's, it's basically a sub route by our wide receiver coming in motion across. If he is open right away, then we'll throw the ball to the Y. If not, we're screening the ball back to the tailback. So it looks like it's, it's a, an RPO, okay? It looks like an RPO, but our offensive line is not blocking run, right? They're blocking screen, okay? So we know we're going to either throw the ball to the Y on that sub route, or we're going to screen it back to our tailback. It comes off our split zone look, Versus, versus coming off that gap scheme power look that, 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 that we run Badger on. So split zone, zone play, fullbacks coming blocking weak. 
can see the fullback coming from left to right. Wolf's tracking, that linebacker's out. This is just another variation, okay, of, of an action that we use a lot to seal the backside edge on short yardage power. So we're, we're going to expect that we're going to get some type of, you know, blitz situation. We'll bring our W across. He'll block on the backside of power and add in. And so we're faking that motion and then just having him release back into the boundary. Okay. And we're trying to we're trying to pick or create a, a a pile up there with our X coming down, which we would do on short yardage power in down in the red zone. Come down and crack with our X receiver. He just gives like a, a subtle pick. Not really a pick. He's you know, we don't pick anybody, we just Rub them a little bit. Okay. Next, the next play action we're going to look at is our 12 and 13 protection, which comes off of our split zone play. So our split zone play is uh, we, we're going to block front side gap across the line of scrimmage. Our fullback, who is going to motion to make sure to see if teams are bumping or, you know, teams are tracking with that lot, the Sam linebacker, um, because that gives us our numbers for our offensive line. So if, if they just bump it, then we know that we're going to, you know, plug it, you know, whether we're going to push it to the Sam or we're going to plug it to the Mac and Will. You know, one thing, we can't block with with six people, we can't block a seven man box. So who's going to be unblocked? And so motioning the fullback will allow our offensive line to determine which of the linebackers we're going to leave. We usually go from the gunner pistol. Uh, I, I prefer the pistol just because it gives us a longer mesh. And we're going to ride the fake in. And our fullback has got to hold it till the quarterback has the ball in his hands before we go through a long run mesh. On our offensive line, it's just block and sword. They are blocking it like the run. They are getting up on linebackers. We want to be aggressive on, on our technique on, on blocking this. <clears throat> our full black blocks the end man on the line of scrimmage. So if we get some type of, uh, if we're run, pushing this play strong and we're getting a will jet, then our, our, our backside tackle is going to have to gather or slow play the backside end and then a fullback will block that end man on the line of scrimmage, okay, which would be the, the blitzing will linebacker. The running back has the outside linebacker to the fake side. It's usually, usually the Sam or the will in a 40 front. We're going to vary the throwing spot, the formation, the motion, the duration of the fake, and the pass routes. So, um, we run 12 and 13 protection, and we run it, you know, 100 different ways. But for, for, the, for our offensive line, it's the same, okay? They know what they're doing. Read whether we're going to push it, what linebacker we're blocking, whether we're, you know, plugging it back to the Mac and Will, or wh whether we're pushing it to the Sam and Mac. This is an example of, of the play, what it would look like, Okay. And in this case, we're, we got a push call. We're, we're pushing it to the Sam and Max. So lots of times we will add a receiver in to block the will. We'll either burn or bash to you know, block that unblocked defender. Lots of ways we can do it to try to slow them up. But play action pass and running RPOs is a great way to slow that will linebacker from coming downhill and filling a gap.
Okay. This is this is would be sword weak. We're running it onto the right side, cuts back to the left. We're in trips formation. We use trips formation a lot. Um, I just find that it, it gives us better receiver distribution, okay? And, uh, you know, when, when you're running the football, <clears throat> if, if teams are going to try to help, you know, you put your best receiver, you're, you're at that X spot. And, and if the team, if the defense is not going to give him any help, then we're, we're going to attack that and, and, and make sure that uh, we are able to get the ball to him. If they do keep someone back, all right, then they're going to have to pull the Sam out of the box or try to split the difference, and then we're going to throw the ball, okay? Or we're going to, you know, try to run the ball strong. So we, we use trips a, a, a lot. And like I said, I also think in the Canadian field where the hashes are, it gives us really good distribution of our receivers. Having said that, we run a lot of trips into the boundary as well. This is just our, our, our basic switch play that we used. Um, we sometimes you run it as an RPO, but in this instant, this this instance, this was against Saskatchewan in the um, Mitchell Bowl a couple of years ago, and so uh, it's just under twelve and thirteen protection. Same basic play as we ran that Badger switch, by, but now we're trying to hold the linebacker. We know one thing. Saskatchewan's tracking. They're going to track with their Sam. So we're going to try to hold that will linebacker from expanding into this bubble. Okay. We blitz the Jack linebacker. Both Mac and Will are up on the line of scrimmage, giving us a huge hole in behind them. Pull back in motion to see that they're tracking. This is We're motioning to trips, which we do a lot, um, trying to influence the end with that W coming across. We're running same, that same 12 protection, making it look like we're running 42 sword. And we're running just basic dig, con dig concept with our number one receiver, our Z receiver. Pushing with the number two, W is holding the flat with his release. Let's have a look at the, the, the action by our offensive line. Pretty good. I mean, our, our left tackle could be getting up there, you know, on the linebacker. UConn's another play out of our, our 12 and 13 protection. It's just kind of a flood play into the boundary, and then we're going to work back across. So we're looking at, as our reads go, we'll take a shot with that Y coming across, but we're really looking at the climb route by our X receiver and that, that either post or dig route by our W, and we're going to read that. Any pre-snap blitz or anything that takes us off, we're coming back to the Z who's running the post.
We ran this play twice in the first half, and no one covered our W. They did this. No one covered our W um, wide open, and we didn't get him the ball. We did get him the ball uh, in the fourth quarter for a touchdown, and he was covered, but he just beat coverage on that on the play. But this is basically the first real read is this climb route by our X coming across. Same play, coming back to our second read to the, to the W, who is wide open. Again, if there's someone high on top, then he's going to sit it down in there. Similar concept, but now we're running it to the field. We're, we're essentially running some type of four verticals with the, with the switch concept and hard play action pass. This play usually, this play usually is an RPO that, you know, we have that ability to, to read the, the linebacker and give the ball or pull it. On this one where we're trying to take that deep shot, and I believe that we were running some type of out and up with our number, our Z receiver. Yeah. And it's just a play action pass. There's, there was no run option. We knew the defensive end was squeezing, opportunity for our quarterback to get outside. And we're going against, you know, Matthew Betts. This is an RPO, okay? Full back motion, tracking, Our fullback would normally block the end man on the line of scrimmage. If the end cut squeezes really, really hard, then we expect that the Sam or Will is going to fill. So if the end squeezes really, really hard and he's trying to take it on, then we'll work outside him, leave him for the running back, and pick up the running back's man with the, with the fullback.
That's that screen, not that saber motion, that sub motion. So similar to the Badger play where we're taking the fullback out to the flat, this time we're bringing the receiver across, our W in this case, uh, looking to be adding in fake, like we're block coming down to crack on the number two defender with the, with, with the X and then slip him in behind. Still our zone protection. So as far as our protection goes, it's, it's one of our best protections because it's a seven man protection zone protection play. Okay. Georgia is basically just, just um, our counter F play where we, we run, we run counter by pulling either the center or the backside guard and bringing the fullback um, across. So we're pulling two. It leaves a, a lot of pressure on the backside tackle. He's got to hold that block on the end. And we're going to ride the protection in. Our, our W is going to the flat. <clears throat> we're pushing through with our, our, our Y and we're digging at, at uh, 18 to 21 yards with our Z. Our X is just running a, a skinny post, and he's our read if we get blitz because that's where we're going to throw, or if the safety rolls over or comes down. So our first read would be to our X. Next, we're going to peek that uh, the W out in the flat, the number three receiver, and then we're going to back to the uh, to the dig shot. But where we're trying to get the football is into the dig. So hard play action. We're pulling guard and fullback on this. And it looks like, you know, our counter F, we call Bronco. In this case, we didn't bring our W, we lined them up in trips, we didn't motion them to trips, but we are pulling guard and fullback on this one because the the backside is in a, in a um a one technique we had a three technique there we get a fast call we bring the uh pull the center get a pretty good look at the protection here Okay, sorry. Um, this one, we're in a, a different formation. We're in a, our fullbacks lined up as a tight end week, and we're keeping them in. Um, we're keeping them in just to provide extra blocking on the, the backside end. So if we have to, we're going to double that backside end on the, uh, uh, into the boundary. Um, this is Wilfred Laurier. They had some outstanding defensive ends um, on their team. And so we had to make sure we're still going to pull, but instead of pulling two, the fullback, we're going to keep our fullback home backside and just pull one. Uh, our, our, our shot play, we can run it out of 12 and 13 protection. We can run it you know, by, by, you know, pulling uh, guards and running it out of our um, G protection. 
Um, the, the one we have drawn up here is uh, off of our 12 and 13 protection. So we're running that split zone look. Uh, we're coming down in that <clears throat> motion with our Z coming down across. He's going to be the underneath guy. The W is now going to be the climb route, climbing across. And so our, our, our hope here is that the free safety is going to come down and try to pick up the, the climb route coming across because that's typically where we throw the ball a lot on these play actions. And when the free safety jumps down, we got a, a corner post shot uh, with our Y receiver. I mean, we, we did kind of cheat here. We moved Harry McMaster, one of our best receivers, into the Y spot for this play. Um, we don't normally do that, but uh, we had to put him in there for a couple other plays or it would be a dead giveaway. But he usually plays the, the, the wide receiver spot, but we put him in this spot for this play. This is just like a, a switch play, um, but instead of the, the boundary to the field. So we're motioning across, running a climb route. That should be our first read. And then our next read, our pre-snap pre read always is gonna be that boundary post. But then we're gonna look at the climb route to this switch concept between our now our outside two receivers. I don't know what that one is. Same concept, just into the boundary. Okay, how are we doing for time, Aaron? Uh, probably two or three more minutes. Okay, I, I got some time for questions. That's, you know, basically uh, all the video I have. Um, so let's open it up and, and uh, if anyone has any specific questions about anything that we do, um, go ahead and, and ask them now. So we got a couple questions, Coach. The first one um, is... You know, obviously the, the fullback is, is such a crucial kind of linchpin in everything that you do. Um, from year to year, I mean, depending on the skill set of, of that individual, does that adapt or change what you do kind of with the fullback, whether it's more of an H-back or a true fullback or kind of a hybrid? You know, I, I, I think in maybe because I was a fullback, Aaron, um, I, I've always used a fullback um, in, in all the offenses that, that, you know, I've been a part of, I use the fullback, lots of reasons. Um, it gives us another gap. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to run gap schemes um, if, if you don't have a fullback um, or a tight end. Um, <clears throat> but you're, you're absolutely correct. You know, sometimes like David Mackey, um, he was, uh, he was playing with the BC Lions now. He was, uh, a great blocker when he got his hands on you. Not a great blocker coming from depth, you know, to, to you know, you know, but a great blocker, you know, once he got his, you know, his hands on you, he, he, you, and he was a great receiver. So we, you know, we used David a lot differently than we used like Tommy, who, who, you know, was a stunner, like would, 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 you know, run and hit people. But David was a great receiver and he, he was really good in zone blocking. So yeah, yes. And the other thing we do is we, we, we try to keep our fullbacks fresh. You know, we don't, we don't, you know, have one fullback run that block that sword play, you know, you know, 
20 times a game. I mean, it, it can be pretty physical. And I think the one thing that I've learned from coaching, you know, is I remember at Mac going, you know, I think we were at, into our third or fourth fullback by the third game of the season. I was like, I'm doing something wrong here. Like I'm starting these fullbacks, you know, we're under center. They're, you know, four or five yards deep and they're taking a 10 yard run at defensive ends. And I'm wondering why we're getting injured, you know? So we, we don't do that. Um, we, we, we kind of more, you know, attack and wait and see what the defender is going to do. If he's going to squeeze, then we're going to try to ride him down. If he's going to, you know, come up field, we're going to try to kick him out. But how we use our fullback has changed a lot. It, it's, it's still a very, very, you know, a physical position, but I, I would say a lot less so in, in some of the techniques that we use. So we do a lot more, you know, getting get in, into people and then driving versus just trying to, you know, stun people with contact. One of the things that, uh, you know, as, um, you know, the, the offenses have evolved to, to really use the quarterback as an athlete. And, you know, Chris Merchant kind of was, was a great example of a, a, you know, a real dual threat and, you know, the power and, and counter and RPOs and, and really forcing not only the end to have to worry about, you know, being cracked by a fullback, but now also having to be aware of, of the quarterback's ability to, to move out of the pocket. How does having that dual threat quarterback give you more versatility in the offense? Yeah, it, 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 it really is. It's like being able to run, you know, that wildcat and, and account for it. Because as, as I said earlier, when, when you have a seven man box and we see seven man boxes traditionally, sometimes we see eight. Um, but when you see a seven man box, uh, because you have a fullback in the game or a tight end in the game, you, it, it's, very, very difficult because you always have one unblocked defender. If that guy's a, a, a great player, he's going to make plays no matter how you influence him. And so, you know, being able to block him with, with your front and, 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 and pull the ball and uh, let the quarterback run is crucial. And I, a dual threat like, like Trey Ford is, you know, I mean, yeah. Merch, Merch was it, it was a willing runner and he was very, very agile and uh, he was an excellent runner. Um, Trey Ford's, in, in, you know, he, he, he is a great runner. I mean, that's, that's his game and he's a great passer. But it puts so much pressure on the defense. In our offense, you know, you're not going to always find a Chris Merchant or a Trey Ford. So what we need in our offense is our quarterback to be willing to run. You know, I'm not going to run a quarterback on on quarterback runs um, ten times in the first game of the season. But if we're in in an, in a championship game or we're in a crucial playoff game and we need to play, we're going to run our quarterback because we know that the, that it's going to be difficult for them to defend it. So a willingness on our quarterback's part to 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 run is crucial for our offense. So, coach, because the offense is is so um you know, premised around the ability to gain, you know, a minimum five, six yards on the ground to really draw linebackers, create those windows. How do you handle a situation where maybe the first quarter of the game, you know, a defense is able to, to stuff the run and, and maybe the windows aren't as big. How do you, how do you handle those situations at the start of a game? I think you, you, you have to understand one, if you go away from what your game plan is, and I think, you know, Joe, Joe Cercelli did, you know, made this point too. You are who you are. And, 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 and we've been successful because our offense hasn't changed. And they, we change some, we window dress things and we move people around and we motion it. But our offense at, at Western has stayed the same. And, and our players come into a system and they learn the same system and they get better at it in the five years that they're there. It's not like we're, we're you know, throwing out the playbook because it didn't work. The same in, in, in your game plan. I mean, one of the things is, too often times you move away from what you 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 do well, um, and you try something else. And the players know it. You, that you know you 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 told them all week that this is what we're going to do, and now you're changing it. And you're giving up on something. Where you, sometimes as coaches we need to stick with it. I will say that say this. You know when when Stevie Snyder was the offensive coordinator here at Western, and we're running our offense like the Western offense. But, you know, Steve did it, you know, he stuck with it. There's times I'm going, hey, Stevie, we got to throw the football. <laughs> we, we, we can't run it against Lavelle. But, you know, he just, he, he was, he, 
he stuck with it. And sometimes you got to wear the defense down a little bit. So don't make your decision based on what your success is in the first quarter. You're going to win this game, you know, by sticking to what you do over four quarters. So coach, the last thing I got to ask is, you know, you've had, you know, so much sustained success, success over the years. And like you said, you know, offensively, other than some window dressings and, you know, maybe keeping a little bit fresh in terms of, you know, based on your skill set of your players, how have you been able to maintain that sustained success, specifically talking about, you know, the ability to constantly rank, you know, in the rushing game, uh, you know, in the top in the country and, and maintain that level of continuity, you know, throughout your years coaching? Um, lots of things. One of the things, as I said, is that, you know, we don't change things up. We do it the same and our players learn the system and get uh, adept at, you know, adept at that, that those tasks and those techniques and those blocking schemes and, and all the different things that they have to do to, to that they're gonna see. Um, we've seen everything. We, we run power, we run counter. We've seen every defense uh, imaginable to stop it. And so our, our players know, you know, what we have to do, you know, to fix things. I think we, we've had some great coaches and lots of them have gone on to, to other, you know, to coach at, you know, other teams and have, and have been successful. But um, I've been fortunate. I've, I've had some great people that, that I've worked with over the years. And um, that's kind of what makes it not a job. You know, I mean, not for me, it's not a job. It's, it, I, I love doing what I do. Uh, we get to coach student athletes who are motivated, uh, show up every day eager to, to learn and, and to get better. And, and I've worked with some outstanding, you know, uh, uh, football coaches in, in my career. And I think that, you know, keep it simple. I, I, I say this, you know, Aaron, I don't know a ton about a lot of things. All right. I, I know this little bit about, Offense and and, and and a very small bit uh, compared to what's out there offensively, but the little bit I know, I know it, and I know it better than anyone else. And so you know, I, I can teach it. And so if, if you're going to, you know, teach it, then you have to know it. And so for you know everyone out here, you know, listening and want to put you know new things in, always see what fits into what you all, all you know already do. And the other thing is. Come visit us, you know, come, you know, come watch us practice, come to our training camp. You know, we hope things are better this year. I am open. I mean, what we, what I showed today is what we do. And if anyone on, on, you know, on this clinic has any questions or would like to learn more, give me a call We can get on this Zoom. I'm getting better at Zoom now and they're more than welcome when we get practicing to come visit us at Western and watch our practices and sit in our meetings. Okay. Well, Coach, that was great. You know, a great way, I think, to sum everything up and sum the day up. I think the consistent theme throughout today and yesterday has been simplicity and, you know, allowing us to be good teachers to the players. And I think you summed that up perfectly. So, Coach, thank you so much for, for being with us today and, and shedding some light on, you know, how, how we can make sure that we're, we're basically, you know, doing the things that we can do really well and, and putting players in the best position to be successful. So, really appreciate it, Coach. Good. Thanks, Aaron. All right, everybody, that is the end for our Saturday Offensive uh, Systems and Skills Day. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, tomorrow we'll start at 11 o'clock as well, and tomorrow is a focus on defense. So allow the defensive coaches to, to, to be able to focus on uh, learning some skills and some drills and some systems. And I uh, appreciate everybody who came out today. And, um, you know, I want to thank again Riddell and the OUA for, for being a big part in, in getting this off the ground. And uh, excited to see everybody tomorrow.